Mark Nutt. Here comes Taylor Jones. Oh, Would you like a suit made? In 2003, a 14-year-old Gavin started watching Red vs. Blue since he was a huge fan of Halo. And on May of that year, he made an account on the RVB website. And as expected from Gavin, started uploading dumb community uploads to the site. I basically did vines before vine was around, but I used to do like front flips in my living room, and I would upload those. These made him popular on the website, and he became known as the dumb British dude that did stupid stuff, which foreshadowed who he would become in Achievement Hunter. And I'd be known for that in the community around, uh, around the forums. I'd be like the, the dumb Brit guy who used to just do flips and stuff. At this time, Gavin was a pretty lonely kid since he didn't have any friends to play games with. And my little friend group, they all found weed at the exact same time. I really wasn't into that at all. I actually lost an entire group of friends. That sucks, so I, spent, man. I never I knew that. A, I spent a lot of time on the internet to make up for it. But Gavin was able to find happiness and belonging on the RVB website, which is also when he met Barbara. I actually met Gavin, I think, within a couple months of signing up on Rooster Teeth. So, like, late 2004. Barbara was also popular on the website, and even though they were in completely different continents, the RVB site linked them together, and they became very good friends. Gavin, who is now 16, was now well known enough on the website that when the Archie crew visited London for an event, he got to spend some time with them. Right. And it was when Jason, Joel, and Gus all came to London. And at that point, I was well known enough by you guys to the point where I could hang out with them before the event. This was a life-changing event for him, because to him, he was just some loser kid who got to hang out with his favorite celebrities. And after this event, Jason Saldana, the voice of Tucker, messaged Gavin to play Halo 2 with him and the rest of the Rooster Teeth crew. And from this, he became much closer with Jason, Gus, Bernie, and everyone else at Rooster Teeth. In 2006, Gavin was working at Waitrose and was given some vacation time so he could study for his upcoming exams. But instead of doing that, he used that time to visit the RT office in Texas, where he finally met Barbara in person. And this was also the time where he lived with Jeff and Griffin for the very first time and became very close friends with them. Instead of revising for my exams, I flew to Austin, Texas, and that was when I became really good friends with Jeff and Griffin. They let me stay with them. Here, he started getting really involved with Rooster Teeth because he noticed that they were always so busy in their office. So he said, hey, if you need extra help, I could always volunteer for you. And I was like, hey, it seemed like you had a bunch of, uh, bunch of stuff and only six guys. If you ever need anyone to, you know, come over for free and just help out, I'm absolutely the guy to talk to because I'll definitely do it. So he started helping out in conventions, machinimating for Red vs. Blue, and remastering the old Red vs. Blue seasons, which really impressed Bernie. Back in England, Gavin had started his career as a high-speed camera operator, and since at the time he was one of the only slow-motion experts in the UK, his career took off and he got to work on things like Top Gear and Sherlock Holmes. Given Gavin's talents, Bernie was happy to hire him, but the problem was that since Gavin was from the UK, he could only come to the US in 90-day chunks, then he would have to fly back to England. Getting Gavin over here on a 90-day on a tourist visa is just not the way to well, do it. Well, there just wasn't any time to do anything. So their solution? get Gavin a work visa so he could move to the US permanently. Well, I was in Austin, I, we were do, working on recreation, and you said, do you want to move here? <laughs> here we go. And I was like, hell yeah. The only problem was, moving to the US is a huge pain in the ass because of the strict immigration laws. But what made it worse was that Gavin didn't have a degree, which meant his work visa options were extremely limited. You never went to university because you had so much early success. Yeah, uh, I, I, I went also... straight from my A-levels into this film job. A-levels are like uh, what you do when you're 16 to 18 at school. So like high school then? Yeah. The only visa he could possibly get was the L1 visa, which is the visa for individuals of extraordinary ability, which Gavin could obtain given his very specialized expertise on high-speed cameras. The problem being that this visa was extremely difficult to get, since you basically needed to prove to the US government that you're an extremely important person. So you had to do things like prove that you're famous, show all the awards you've won, and prove that you've been on international news. And Gavin and Bernie were spending months and months and getting no progress. And the requirements for this visa were literally like win awards, be written about in national newspapers of your home country, or appear on television, appear on movies. television yeah. for your accomplishments. This entire time, so many filming opportunities in America were being offered to Gavin, but since he couldn't get into the US, they all started without him. Which is actually the reason why Gavin wasn't in the first emergence, since it was originally going to be Jeff, Gavin, and Gus. But because of this visa issue, they had to cut Gavin out completely. So I was watching Immersion come out and uh, getting more and more depressed about how I couldn't be there. You then messaged me saying, uh, we feel like the opportunity is passed for this 
this visa, we've hired two other people, so there wasn't really any room for me anymore. So I, at this point, this was probably the most depressed I've ever been, because like everything that I was looking forward to happening was just not happening anymore. So their solution to this problem was, maybe Gavin could start a YouTube channel based around his slow motion camera skills, and maybe, just maybe, he could get famous enough to qualify for the O1. Gavin was pretty bummed out because he felt his chance at his dream job had slipped away. So he decided, might as well start that YouTube channel I've been thinking about, and he started shooting slow motion footage to just try something. Gavin called the channel The Slow Mo Show and asked his good friend Dan Gretschy to help him out. So I was like, Dan, help me out with something. Uh, let's shoot a bunch of these. The aim is for it to get big on YouTube. When they started uploading, they were getting a couple tens of thousands of views per video, which in 2010 was pretty good. And Gavin thought, you know what? Rooster Teeth didn't work out, but the slow-mo channel is actually going pretty well. But then Gavin had an idea for a video that he predicted would get incredibly popular. And then I had an epiphany of a video that I thought would get way more views. At the time, the most popular thing to film in slow motion was a balloon popping full of water. But then I googled what's the biggest balloon you could buy and I found this website called giantballoons.co.uk selling six foot balloons. I ordered it and I predicted that this would be the video that would take off. So in May of 2011, Gavin uploaded the video Giant Six Foot Water Balloon and it instantly went viral. So I uploaded the video and within a day it had a million views. That video got me in the news, I was written about in newspapers. I did a live interview with Australian Breakfast TV talking about the video. After getting insanely popular, achieving a bunch of awards and appearing on international news, Gavin realized he now qualified for the O1 visa, meaning his chance at working for Rooster Teeth was now back on. All of a sudden, I met every single requirement of this visa all at once. Instantaneously. And you aimed me and you were like, hey, let's look at this visa thing again. So after months and months of failing, losing all those opportunities, and Gavin going through a depressive pit in his life, he finally got his visa and was finally able to move to the US and achieve his dream of working for Rooster Teeth. I was very proud to get that visa because it was a dream of mine to work for Rooster Teeth in the US. And it really just shows that if you put your mind to it, you can really achieve anything from nothing. You just might have to find a weird way to do it. But the story doesn't end there, because when he moved to Texas to start at Rooster Teeth, he originally worked in the dungeon of the old Rooster Teeth office alongside Barbara, Brandon, and Lindsay, but he couldn't stay, and he had to move all his stuff to the only other available desk in the building, which was in the Achievement Hunter office, right next to Michael. The first, what was the first thing you worked on at Achievement Hunter? I edited Rage Quit, <laughs> and I didn't have anything to do, so I was like, anyone need anything done? And Michael was like, yeah, you can edit this if you want, and then he left, <laughs> and I edited Rage Quit. Put her on the fucking body! You see that bitch? Right there? Fucking look at her, you doing this? They then started doing Minecraft and GTA, which made them incredibly popular. And he later met Meg, which, by the way, I have a video on how they met. And that little 14-year-old boy from Tame England was able to achieve his dream of working at Rooster Teeth.